we both had fathers that that worked regular sort of shift patterns so we could we could organize when and how we sort of spend time with them but it is that balance it's that family you've got a family so you know how you balance yeah. that is, is unbelievable you know hats off to you if i got a job abroad filming something like that, I, I might not see my kids for a month or two you know and and it's weighing that up isn't it because I value my role as a parent far more than my role as an actor or any role I could possibly get as an actor. So I think if it comes, if my role, if my job as an actor starts cutting into my role as a parent, I don't know how long I'd stick at it, if I'm honest. Because you miss out on stuff, you know? And especially when they're, they're young, that's the good stuff. And it's not, you don't get that stuff back. You don't get that time back. You don't get that time to build that relationship back, you know? And at the end of the day, it's just a fucking job, you know? It, it is a job. And a lot of people, a lot of people do go into it with those, you know, rose, rose tinted glasses and, and go, oh, this is, this is the love for it. Um, it's the love of the job. Yeah, fair play. It is the love. That's why I do it. That's probably why you do it. But yeah, at the, at the yeah. End of the, I don't do it for, you know, adoration. I I do it to feed my kids. You know. I've I've I think I think coming from that practical background gives me um a sort of a practical approach to acting, you know? I do love it. I do love the people. I I I love telling stories. I love making people laugh. I I love that it satisfies that mischievous sort of streak in me you know because i'm useless in a in a in an office sat at the same desk for 40 years i get sacked because i'd literally be sat there going <laughs> <laughs> what one little pranks can i play you know making it... i would you know i just just get sacked <laughs> it does I, I, just... I do i do love it but i don't need it i think is what yeah is what i'm you yeah. know yeah but I reckon there's a there's a TV show in that you trying to get sacked from a from an office job. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> I wouldn't have to try very hard, mate, <laughs> because I love a prank. I'm from like well, your dad probably knows. My grandfather's like the the, the Bruce Lee of winder uppers, you know. <laughs> He's like the Muhammad Ali of practical jokers, and um, and I love a practical joke, but I've I've never been one to sort of like know when to stop, you know. I, I, I did this sitcom called High Hopes in Wales. It went down really well. And the guy who played the lead in it, uh, my sort of father figure in it, Bob Blythe, God rest his soul, we'd have like tit for tat wind ups, which culminated in me buying a severed pig's head from Cardiff Market and putting it in his guest toilet, right? Because he, he let it slip to me quite innocently that. Whenever he, the, the BBC rent us these flats, these lovely flats in, in Cardiff when we were doing it. Very lucky. And um, the guest bathroom that he had, he said he never takes a poo in his ensuite bathroom, right? He always, if he wakes up in the night, staggers half drunk out to his guest toilet, has a poo in there. So I put it in there. But then I started thinking, oh, because Bob, Bob's idea of taking him, you know, taking care of himself was like bread, cheese, and lager. That's it, you know, that was his diet. So he, he was no triathlete, mate, okay? And I had this image of him, because the pig's head is bigger than you think, and the snout was about three inches below the sort of toilet seat. So I had, I had images of this fairly fat, unhealthy man sitting down for a shit in the middle of the night, his, his dangly old man testicles resting on a cold pig snout, right? And him having the fight of his life and having a heart attack and dying whilst shitting on a pig's head. And and just just thinking of the South Wales Echo headline, you know? High Hope Star found dead shitting on a pig's head. And that would have been my fault, so I, I had to tell him that it was in there. Oh my god. That's why I get sacked, mate. Can you imagine <laughs> that? In like in the office bathroom. <laughs> Who put the seven pig's head in, in, in the gents' toilet? Sorry, uh, boss. 
Yeah. Yeah. My, my dad always tells me about the, uh, you know, the old, uh, the old pranks. He was the, he was the one they played pranks on. My dad was, uh, we're from a family of pranksters and just, just taking the piss. And that to me is absolutely hilarious. I, had to I think it must be a, maybe, is it a Welsh thing? Because Ellie's family don't do it. And Ellie's all, like my wife is always like, is always sort of telling me your family just i never know when they're telling the truth because it's always a wind up they're always on the wind but, that, but that's me that's me all the time with anyone whoever i meet people yeah. go is he telling the truth i'm like sometimes yeah. I am, sometimes i'm not but yeah. every yeah. single time it, it is it must be a welsh thing i don't know but it, it's certainly yeah. our area that upper, upper maybe Swansea it's a swansea valley, valley thing swansea yeah. valley thing because we always play pranks have you ever seen les mis yeah do you know the bit in the wedding where the Tenardiers come in and uh, they, they shout at Marius and the whole place stops, you know? Uh, but first you pay! Silence. Nobody speaks on stage. Or the, the orchestra stops. The play stops. I thought it'd be a good idea to let out a little fart, right? In that exact silence. Thinking it would just be a little poop. It, was, it went through the whole scale, mate. It was like, a, it was so loud that like mm. the front couple of rows were laughing in the audience, right? And I was laughing so much I couldn't get my next four or five lines out. The guy playing Marius, bless him, was gone so much that like the director came in and had a word of him and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we call it Fartgate. Oh my God. Oh, Steve, that's it's that, isn't it? It's that sort of it like, is. it's that mischievous element that, that for me gets satisfied by this this job. Steve Mayo, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you again. Likewise, my friend. It's absolutely brilliant to see you. Thank you for doing this, buddy. I really appreciate it. Um, you are more than welcome, my friend. I just want to do the part where we slag Russ off a bit more. Can do, mate.